when I when I say to everybody about the Leeds game, um, everybody talks about Leeds game. Kevin McAllister. Now I will say, who scored the other one? Nobody ever remembers. <laughs> but that's that's the way it is. Kevin was magnificent that day, but um, nobody remembers who scored the second goal. But I go back to December '82. In December '82, Alec Totten signed me from Albion Rovers, and the club were bought in the league at the particular time. And I know that Alec, who I thought was a terrific manager, great man manager, still a good friend of mine, I still play golf with him and I still keep in touch with Alex. Alex um, knew that he needed to change the team about. There had been a, some players there, it had been a long time. And he wanted to, uh, first and foremost, stay in the division and then the summer try and bring in some new faces and things like that. And it was great. We, we made a good start. We actually climbed the table and probably finished mid table, I think. Um, and I remember Alex and I speaking, and he says, listen, I'm bringing in a young lad from Camelon Juniors. And if I'm being honest, it surprised me, but I didn't know anything about Kevin McAllister at that particular time, and it was a case of, well, I thought you wanted to take the club forward. Should we be signing junior players? And, and I think I mentioned that. He thought, and thought says, well, we'll just wait till you see him. And I remember coming back for pre-season training, and my first pre-season training with Falkirk, and then comes this young boy, um, really young boy, no the tallest, fairly thin. And Alex, uh, or one of the backroom staff, introduced me to Kevin. And Kevin was just a, a typical Camelon boy, you know, um, very bubbly, um, declared right away how, how much Falkirk Football Club meant to him, was thrilled and honoured to be the fact that he was joining Falkirk, you know, and it's one of these things where you think to yourself, well, we need to see him in the training ground. We need to see him playing a game because he just looks like a wee boy. And is he he's is he going to be one that takes us forward? Well, first, firstly and foremost, in the days, your first couple of days or first week was normally hard running. So it was difficult to judge um, Kevin in the first week. But when the balls come out, honestly, within one training session, I knew... Uh, with Kevin, what a really good player he was. And I was really excited about it because um, in training, you just give him the ball. Or you, if you're an opponent against him in training, you couldn't get the ball off him. You know, it was very, very difficult. And we had some strapping lads. And Bomber was there at the time. Alan Mackin was there. Andy Nicholl uh, was quick and athletic at that particular time. He couldn't get the ball off him. He could make a mess of you. If I'm being honest, uh, we used to pick teams in, in the training to see and if I was picking the team, my first pick was always Kevin. And, you know, one of these things, it's a blind man could have seen it. I'm not trying to make myself out good here, but I knew that Kevin would go on to bigger and better things once I seen him in the first couple of games. And I go, I'll go back to Alex Totten. Alex Totten loved wingers. He absolutely loved wingers. And at that particular time, he brought Kevin in. He sat in the team um, from Camelon Juniors. And he brought Arthur Grant in. Arthur Grant was a left winger. Arthur Grant was more straight line and putting crosses into the box, which is great for a striker because, you know, if you go in there, the ball's likely to come in because Arthur was quite quick as well. But with Kevin, you give Kevin, if you're under pressure, you give Kevin the ball. Kevin would keep the ball and dribble past people. He'd take them on again. He'd cut back on his left foot. He'd use his left foot to put the ball in the box. He'd, cut, he'd go on his right foot and he'd put balls into the box for there. And he was living the dream in the days with regards to playing for Falkirk, but the thing about it was the Falkirk fans bought in, in him right away. And, and who couldn't? You know, I, I look at it and, and think to myself, well, um, here's a young lad who's got pace, who can dribble past people, who against big, strong guys, for one so small and, and, and no so physical, but he could mix it as well. He wasn't frightened to take a tackle or he wasn't frightened to leave a foot in as well, which... In the days you liked, as you know, you liked uh, to be strong and in, uh, in the tackle, and you know, and I just thought um, he beginning his career um, at Falkirk Football Club was brilliant, and for a for a couple of seasons, uh, obviously Alec Totten left, Gregor Abel took over, and then Ricky McFarlane was a caretaker manager, and then Billy Lamont came in. But by that time, it was a case of there was we knew. We knew there were senior clubs, and, it, and it, if I'm being honest, it surprised me that none of the, the big Glasgow clubs tried to take them. 
or even in Aberdeen trying to take him at that particular time. But um, Chelsea had obviously been doing their work and, and it was Chelsea who were watching him and, and they looked after him uh, by singing him. And, and it was good money for Falk at the particular time. It was a huge disappointment for, for us as teammates. It was a huge disappointment for the manager probably. We don't think of the finances of the club when, when players are going out. Um, I understand it. Obviously, having been a manager now, but at that particular time, it can deflate you a wee bit when you see you, you want them to do well, but at the same time, you want them in your team and for that for your club to progress. And um, But you could never, ever stand in his way. And I knew for a fact that if he went down there and was given an opportunity, he would, he would be tremendous. He'd part in Evan to fight with at Chelsea, but he played a lot of games. Big Joe McLaughlin was there, at, I think, at the same time as Kevin. You know? So Kevin's start and introduction to Falkirk Football Club, for me, was tremendous. And I, 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 I'm convinced that he put, put people into the gates simply because word of mouth of how Falkirk were playing, some reports of how this young guy, Kevin McAllister, was playing. And for me personally, it was great because I was in the end of some of these crosses and got myself a couple of goals, which it was delightful at that particular time. But I could actually stand and admire him and watch him um, playing all day long. And as I say, he was a young boy at the time, but he got better and better as his years went on. Going back to, to that 83 84 season, I think it might have been, was the fact that um, him with 11 goals for a winger, I think it was tremendous. Me, I was happy to get it double figures. If I'm convinced that a couple of times if he'd passed it earlier, I might have had double figures, a lot more double figures than he had in 11, he might have finished above him. So he probably keeps that one up his sleeve, the fact that he beat me as a top goal scorer that year. A, a, a short story, uh, very quickly, if I can say it, is that the day that he, he went to Hibs, Jim Jeffries, who um, had a car, and in those days there wasn't mobile phones, or, you know, but there was phones inside the car, which were actually attached to the car. He sent me with Kevin McAllister to drive him through Easter Road the day that he was signing for Hibernian. But he says to me, Husty, don't go in, park round the corner, because a lot of people don't know this, but Celtic were wanting to sign Kev McAllister. Liam Brady was desperate to get Kev McAllister as well. And I think the fee that Hibs might have paid was a couple hundred grand. I think it was £200,000. But even up to that morning, that he says, drive through to Edinburgh, be in the vicinity of Easter Road, you know, because I was starting to help Jim and the coaching side at this time, although it was Jim and Billy were the main men. I was starting to take their youths and hang about in the car until you get a phone from me. And that was the, the thing about, never forget, I was desperate for the phone to ring um, and, and for me to answer it because it hadn't worked, you know, and mobile phones were a novelty at the time. And I remember we sat in the car outside Easter Road for about 45 minutes and then the phone did ring and it was Jim saying the Celtic board wouldn't uh, sanction the money. Um, so Kevin McAllister was very, very near to being a Celtic player back in, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but Liam Brady, um, who was a fantastic footballer himself, recognised how well Kevin was doing for Falkirk and wanted to take him there. You know, So Kevin could easily have went to Celtic but there was, there was, it was that much away from being a Celtic player. When you look at some of the players who have been capped in Scotland, and I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way to any of the players who have one cap even, um, but Kevin McAllister, in my opinion, earned the right to be called up at that particular time. He was lighting up crowds. I think opposition fans loved him as well, you know, with regards to... They didn't like the fact that he was playing against them and maybe scoring against them, um, but Kevin McAllister's ability merited a Scotland Cup. You know, I, I was at I was at Hearts with Jim and Billy when they played that semi-final at, at Ibrox Park and, and the low Hearts won the game. Kevin McAllister did not deserve to be in the losing team and he actually scores a wonder goal. And I, I, I remember being in the bench in, in the dugouts at, at, as an opponent against Falk at that day and there's loads of times, you know, Jim was an angry man at times, an angry manager and couldn't help but sell, uh, express his feelings towards his own players. And Jim was going bananas in the fact that uh, Kevin was running the show, was running a mock, he was taking people on inside, he was taking people on outside, and then he comes in, inside with a left-footed strike. And I think that was an equaliser, if, if, if I'm right. But Hearts, if I'm being honest, were the luckiest team in the world 
uh, to come away with a victory and go into the final. You know, it's forgotten now because Hearts went on to win the final in 98. That was 98. Um, but Kev McAllister's performance that, that day was as good an individual performance as I'd ever seen him. And I was an opponent of him that day. But I played with him in some great games, but people won't remember them. But, uh, but they could, not only could they, he do it in the Premier League, but he could also do it in big major cup semi-finals where I think it might have been televised live as well, but Ken McAllister that day was absolutely sensational. And, and I'd like to say as well, I'm absolutely delighted and that, that he's getting recognised. And I hope the stand, uh, the South stand does get called the Ken McAllister stand, you know, because if there's any one player through the last 100 years, maybe, I don't know, maybe 50 years, I would remember that, uh, through the last 50 years deserve such an honour as Ken McAllister, you know, because he's, He's been Falkirk through and through. I knew how much he loved the club as a footballer and I knew how much he loved the, the, the club as a supporter. And he was a fan. But the lucky thing for him, as he used to say, is I was able to pull on the jersey and, and actually play in front of the supporters for him. So uh, I hope this all comes off and fairly soon and, I, and, and I'll be delighted for him.